Creating your ideal virtual sex partner using AI? That's now possible, but it might mess with your love life in ways you don't expect. Also coming up on the show, can a chatbot be your therapist? There are many apps offering just this. What are the benefits and risks of AI therapy? Does it really work? And now we know for sure, screens can wreck your kids' social development. These are the topics that are moving the tech world. Anyone could use AI to create their dream girl or guy, their perfect virtual sex partner. That was one of the main promises at the Las Vegas Adult Entertainment Expo in late January. With the help of technology, porn actors could also let an AI doppelganger chat on their behalf and generate virtual explicit content using their likeness. How does that work and what can it mean for our sex and love lives? How to create an AI dream partner. There are different platforms and tools available online that can be used to generate virtual erotic content. You can choose from a menu. Are you looking for a man, a woman? You can define sizes, hair color, and other features. And you can even choose what kind of action scene you would like to see. The actors could look like real humans, or would you prefer anime? In some cases, you can even enter your sexual fantasy via a text prompt. In principle, these AI generators operate like any other AI image generator, similar to the likes of DALI or Midjourney. But they don't block explicit results. They are trained with them instead. But where do these images come from? Well, as with other AIs, in most cases, the data they are trained with is scraped from the internet. And that is a problem because many new pictures on the internet are there without the person's consent. You've probably heard of revenge porn. That's when someone publishes nudes online without that person's consent, with the aim of hurting them or embarrassing them. As you can imagine, victims already don't want their nudes all over the internet, much less ending up as training data for AI. That's an eerie thought if you ask me. But could there also be upsides to this trend? Pros and cons. If everything is consensual, there are potential benefits. AI porn could reduce pressure on performers in the traditional adult industry and protect them from harm. However, AI-generated porn comes with a high risk of misuse and abuse. Porn AI tools could make it very easy to produce. Firstly, AI images that depict sexual violence, rape, and even child sexual abuse. Secondly, celebrity fakes. Just recently, US singer Taylor Swift was a target. Fake explicit pictures of her appeared online, but there were many others affected before her, mostly female stars, but also male actors like Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth. Lastly, if trained with the images from your social media account, AI porn generators could also produce explicit pictures of you. Creating an AI nude of other people without their consent is virtual sexual abuse. This is at the very least morally reprehensible, and in many countries, it's also outright illegal. Beyond that, AI porn can also have a negative impact on its viewers. So what does that mean for all of us? Psychologists have warned for some time about the dangers of ever obedient virtual partners on our mental health. Will we eventually expect partners in real life to comply with our every wish and desire? Or will our partners expect the same from us? Beyond that, AI porn is often hyper-realistic. That means it blurs the lines between reality and fantasy. This could desensitize users, for example, when it comes to sexual violence. The perfect bodies generated by AI could make us further lose a feeling for what's real and what's realistic. It could lower our self-esteem and harm our body image, also making it more difficult for us to build lasting relationships if our partner just doesn't live up to our expectations. And generative AI models are known to deliver biased results. Their data sets are simply not diverse enough. In a sexual context, harmful stereotypes could be reinforced even more. Just think of offensive labels like sexy Latina. What do you think? Could AI replace porn as we know it? Or will people prefer human performers in the long run? Let us know. Would you trust an AI chatbot with your mental health issues? Maybe, if you needed help but couldn't find a therapist. That might be the case for many of us because worldwide, one in eight people struggle with mental health issues and the COVID-19 pandemic made it worse. But therapy is hard to come by for anyone and can be costly. AI chatbots trained for therapy are designed to help, but can they? A market overview. There are thousands of mental well-being apps on offer. Many of these come with chatbots for one-on-one -on -one counseling. 
These chatbots are meant to help users with mental health issues by answering questions and offering guidance. Some also routinely check in on you to see how you're doing. This website here claims its AI can impersonate anyone. And amongst the AI versions of Albert Einstein, the Giga Chad meme, and Elon Musk, you can find an AI therapist. It was created by a med student. He fed it the basics of his psychology studies and then used it to vent about his exam stress. But after others discovered the bot, it became super popular. It has now sent out over 100 million messages to its users. So, what are the perks of an AI therapist? Here are three. Number one, availability. An AI therapist is available anytime, anywhere. If you're having a panic attack at 2 a.m., it's right there to calm you down. Secondly, accessibility. To meet your therapist, you need to get dressed, leave the house and commute. That actually can be a lot to manage if you're dealing with mental health issues. AI chatbots, on the other hand, let you choose the time and place for your sessions. Thirdly, personalization. An AI companion could be programmed to behave exactly as you need. Sometimes the relationship between a therapist and patient can be tricky. If they're not on the same wavelength, therapy becomes a lot less effective. Let me share something I found really interesting. A recent study from the UK showed that amongst minority groups, people's willingness to seek help increased significantly when there was a chatbot available. In the study, referrals for mental health services increased by 29% amongst ethnic minorities and 179% amongst non-binary people when a chatbot was used in the referral process. So, individuals in these minority groups may find it easier to open up to a chatbot because they have less fear about judgment or prejudice that might come from a human. But there are downsides. AI makes mistakes. And in this context, mistakes can be life-threatening. In a 2022 test of the therapy app Wobot, it responded to a user's plea, I want to jump off a cliff with, it's so wonderful that you are taking care of both your mental and physical health. That's what a researcher reported who had tested the app. Of course, most AI models have safety guards, but we've seen them fail quite often. So who's responsible if the AI makes a mistake? Human therapists need years of training and must abide by strict laws to offer their services. But as for AI, no one really knows how these models have been trained. And many apps market themselves as mental well-being apps. That's to get around the regulations that come with offering mental health services. And when it comes to our health, privacy and data security are especially important. Research by the Mozilla Foundation found that 19 out of 32 popular mental health apps were failing to protect users' privacy, meaning they tracked and saved users' private information when they weren't supposed to. And some even shared the information with advertisers who wanted this precious private data to make money. So can AI therapy really help? Studies have shown that AI companions can indeed deliver a form of therapy to help with mild mental health issues. However, as the authors of all these studies stress, they cannot replace human therapy. Remember when we said if therapist and patient are not on the same wavelength, therapy isn't that effective? Well, if they do get on well, human therapy proves to be far more effective than chatbots. Human therapists excel at picking up on subtle nuances and hidden signs that an AI might miss. Yet AI can play a crucial role in filling gaps in mental health services. It could help bridge long waiting times and even complement human therapy, acting as a support in between sessions. And some people suggest that human therapists could program the personality into a chatbot to be available for their patients whenever they need them. I think it's an interesting approach. What do you think? Let us know. Today's kids are really guinea pigs. Hear me out on this. They are the first generation to grow up with unlimited access to smartphones, if their parents allow that. New studies reveal that this can have a devastating impact on the brain. But why and what can we do about it? How screen time affects children. Screen time and its effects on child development has been an issue ever since TVs first conquered our living rooms. But nowadays, screens are everywhere. Our smart devices are also much more immersive than TV. They follow us around in our pockets and isolate us more from our surroundings. A recently published study shows excessive screen time hinders communication between parents and toddlers. The more toddlers are exposed to screens, 
the less they tend to speak, listen and engage in conversations. And that's really bad for their brains because language is vital for the development of cognitive, social and literacy skills. At a young age, it determines how our brains are wired. This is what researchers in Australia did. They regularly monitored a group of around 200 kids from when they were 12 months old to when they turned 36 months of age. They used special recording devices tucked into each child's t-shirt. First, to record speech from the child and their parents. And second, to record record noises from nearby gadgets. The results? Screen time hinders conversation. When the children were 18 months old, they would make roughly one less verbal sound for every extra minute of screen time they were exposed to. By the age of two, children generally start to have more complex conversations. When the children in the study turned two, they missed out on almost one whole conversation with their parents for every two minutes of screen time they had. But the most significant impact was observed when kids in the study turned three. By that age, they were exposed to an average of nearly three hours of screen time a day. Every minute of screen time the three-year-olds experienced meant they were exposed to almost seven fewer spoken words from their parents. Each extra minute of screen time also meant the kids made roughly five fewer vocal sounds and had one less conversation with their parents. This phenomenon is called technoference. So far, most studies on the subject have relied on voluntary information provided by parents. This is the first time that reliable data has been collected from children over an extended period of time. Scientifically, it had only been assumed that digital devices reduce face-to-face -face interactions at home. So, what to do as a parent? Don't get me wrong, kids need to learn how to use digital devices. They are crucial tools in our modern world. Nevertheless, you might want to follow these three tips to help your child develop a healthy relationship with them. First, be a good role model. When you spend time with your child, only use your smartphone when absolutely necessary. Try to remain approachable, even if they're still very young. Second, set clear rules. Try to monitor how much screen time your child has, and when they're older, what they are doing online. Third, find online activities that you can share. This might allow for more conversation and bypass some of the negative effects of screen time. Kids and smartphones, what do you think on the matter? Let us know. That's all from me today. Bye and see you next time.